This is Pastor Wayne at Alpine Bible Church, and I want to talk to you today about leadership in uncertain times. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that our few minutes together will be an encouragement to you as we navigate these uh, new and challenging times that we're all faced with. Um, I do want to talk to you today about leadership and leadership maybe from a different perspective than you have uh, possibly uh, thought through it before. Uh, I'm going to call this leadership in uncertain times, but as we get into it, you'll see that it's, uh, it's unique to leadership for us as believers. Uh, several of the staff here at uh, Alpine Bible Church have been studying a book that's called Designed to Lead. It's by uh, Eric Geiger and Kevin Peck. And these two gentlemen have done a great job explaining to us and reminding us that all Christians are designed to lead. Um, every believer is designed by God to influence others through leadership. And they summarize their main point this way, and I, and I, this is really good for us. And they say, Christian leadership is designed for the glory of God and the good of others. So the church, the body of Christ, is designed to develop leaders who will bless and serve their families, their churches, their communities, and the world as they glorify God. And that just really helps us to, to keep a focus in on what we're really designed to do by God. We're designed to lead. We're designed to be an influence to other people. And to illustrate, the authors of the book that we're, that we're talking about, of, of Designed to Lead, have used an Old Testament story that you might find uh, familiar. I'm going to be reading out of Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 11, if you have a Bible and want to follow along. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I, whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens and eat at their produce. Take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, and multiply there and do not decrease. So God had given them some instruction that said, don't, while you're in captivity, don't, don't just stop doing everything be like this but then he says in verse 7 and this is where i think it's really good he says seek the welfare of the city where i have sent you into exile and pray to the lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will have welfare and interestingly the word uh, welfare can also be translated peace and so if you think of it in that way you can say seek the peace of the city where i have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its peace you will have peace. Now many of the nation of Israel had been taken captive to Babylon, and God had instructed Jeremiah to explain how he wanted them to live while they were in captivity in Babylon. And in part, he said this to them, Desire peace for the city, and pray for the city that you're in, because as you help them to be at peace, then you will be at peace. God is telling Israel, glorify me by blessing those whom I have put, in contact, put you in contact with. And even if you're in captivity, he says, even in your captivity, I want you to glorify them and bless them. Or glorify me by blessing them. Bless them by seeking their peace, by praying for them, by doing what you can to bring my peace to them, God says. In short, be a blessing where I've put you. Now, I hope you can see how God's message to the nation of Israel in their captivity in Babylon can be applicable to us right now in the situation that we're in. We're in some different times. Uh, we're, the times are, we're, there's so many unknowns, there's things changing daily, and sometimes they're changing hourly, and the stock market's moving up and down, and everyone's at home that used to go to work or school, and there's empty shelves on the, at the grocery stores, and restaurants are closed, and even our churches are having to close down for, the, for a short time. But God says, in all of that, pray for those around you and be a blessing and be the blessing and peace of God to them. Uh, Mr. Geiger and Mr. Peck state it this way in their book. They say, God has sent his people into the world to be a common grace to the world 
that all people may taste the grace of God and the peace of God. And as believers, we have this uh, uh, just incredible truth about us. We have the person of grace and the person of peace indwelling us. And because we have his peace and because we have his grace, then we have that peace that passes understanding that the Bible talks about. Even in difficult times like we face now, you and I have grace, have the grace and peace of God that we can pass on to those God brings us into contact with. And that's a wonderful thing during these times. Um, if you've been looking online with the church and with Alpine Bible Church and stuff, you know that Pastor Nathaniel recently sent out a message, uh, I think just yesterday it went out, about one of the ways that we can extend the grace and the peace of God for others to taste. And that's through the uh, ABC uh, Corona Relief uh, we have a fund that we're setting up, and we have some, uh, some ways that we want to have people bring and, and, and participate in that and, and help out with that. But this effort has been organized to help those who might have been affected in some way by recent events. And, and I just want to cur encourage us in a couple of ways related to our desire to helping people at the church here. So the first thing is, is this, is this is a great way to get involved in the lives of those around us. Uh, you know, sometimes we're so busy, we, we get so many things going on, and it gets difficult to, to, to tie in and invest in the lives of people around us. But this is a wonderful way to do that and to help maybe meet some needs that they might have. Uh, this is a great opportunity to be a blessing. And as Pastor Nathaniel pointed out in his message, that we can give financially, we can bring items to the church to, to share, uh, we can pick up and distribute items. There's so many ways that we can help and that we can participate in people's lives in this way. So I encourage you to be a part of it because as we all are so aware, there, there are so many opportunities to help uh, and so many places where the people around us could use help and specifically at this particular time. It's always going to be the case that people around us might need some help, but I think right now it's so much more prevalent and so much more there. As a matter of fact, this is uh, exactly the way God set things up. This is the way God wants his church to operate. Listen to a few verses that I want to share with you. This is, uh, comes from Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 10 through 13. It says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in difference, or in, not lagging behind, excuse me, in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, preserving in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Now listen to this, contributing to the needs of the saints and practicing hospitality. That word contributing can also be, be said as uh, distributing or imparting. The point of is being a part of meeting the needs of the saints, and we can all do that. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 carries that a little further, and this one I really enjoy. The verse says, bear one another's burdens and therefore uh, fulfill the law of Christ. And, and we know the law of Christ is love God and love others, right? So, so we want to fulfill that law of loving God and loving others. And, and Paul encourages the Galatians by saying, bear one another's burdens. But this word bear is so unique. Bear in general means to carry in the hands. But in this specific verse, the word bear has the added aspect of patiently. And so we could say patiently carry in the hands or patiently carry in your hands one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ and so express the love of God uh, through your love for others. And, and I think that's just a great way to think of it. Patiently carry in your hands one another's burdens. And one more verse that I think is good in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 15 and 16, it says, Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the first, fruits of, or the first fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. Now listen to verse 16. And do not neglect go, doing good and sharing. For such sacrifices God is pleased. Do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Again, the word sharing in this verse can be translated distributing. Don't neglect doing good and distributing 
to the needs of others. So we see be a part of meeting the needs of others in the verses. We see patiently carrying in our hands one another's burdens. And we see not neglecting doing good and sharing in or being a part of distributing to and meeting the needs of God's people. Because again, those type of sacrifices please God. It's enjoyable and, and, and very encouraging for us to realize all that we can do and all that we can be a part of in encouraging and serving and meeting other people's needs. Now, the second point of encouragement I want to make is this. If you have needs, please contact the church. Please let the body of Christ be a blessing to you. Um, we are here for you, and we want to be able to assist you in any way we can, and we would count it a privilege to be able to help you in the name of Christ. So please contact someone at the church. Let us know what your needs are. Let us know how we can help. We have a group of people here waiting and wanting to help. Give us that opportunity to be a blessing. Because listen, while... We're not in captivity in a foreign land like the nation of Israel was. We're certainly being held captive by a virus that, that we have little control over and that seems to be totally out of control. And not to mention the effects of a recent earthquake. I mean, there's so many things that, that we just can't do anything about, but there's a lot that we can do about there's a lot of things that we can be a help with. And there's a lot of ways that we can be a blessing and share in other people's challenges and be part of, of helping them out. And just as God had Jeremiah encourage Israel to desire peace where he had put them and to be a blessing even in exile, God is encouraging us to be peace to those around us. Be a blessing. Be peace. Be a blessing in our families, in our churches, in our community, and in the world. As Christians, to be honest with you, that you know, sometimes life gives us stuff and, and, and we're not really able to function and able to do a whole bunch that where we're able to be an encouragement to other people. But listen, as Christians, when you think about it, this is our time to lead. Uh, this is our time to be an influence uh, for others, toward others. This is our time to shine the light of Christ to, to not only to those around us, to the entire world. Uh, this is our time to be the hands and feet of Christ. You hear that said all the time, but, but this truly is a chance to serve him in that way. This is our time to be peace. This is our time to be grace. This is our time to be a blessing. And, and, and really, you can summarize it like this. This is our time to be church. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 says this, And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and to good deeds. And... You know, the writer of Hebrews could have just as easily said it like this, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to be the church. Because that's basically what he's, what he's saying. So let's stimulate each other to love and stimulate each other to good deeds, to doing things for other people. Now, Mr. Geiger and Mr. Peck pointed out the part of God's plan for Israel and Babylon was as God's people that they would strive to live according to the image of God, and in so doing, be light and life to those around them in kindness, justice, and goodness. And that's just a really good uh, also challenge for us. And, and what I think God would be saying to us, and really what my prayer is, is the same for us, that we, as God's people, would strive to live similarly uh, according to the image of God that we are bearers of and to bring light and life to those around us in kindness and in justice and in goodness. And so my prayer is that, uh, that that's a, something that's on all of our hearts, and that's what we desire to do in these times, in these challenging times, because as believers, I hope you get this and I hope you understand this, as believers, we're all leaders. As believers, we're all influencers. And we're leaders and influencers for the glory of God and for the good of others. And so we, may we love and serve those around us with grace and peace and with blessing and, and, and with the grace and the peace and the blessing of God because that's what we have to share. That's what we have indwelling us. Please consider partnering with ABC as we endeavor to encourage others uh, through our uh, corona relief efforts. And uh, we just want to thank you again for the time that you've allowed us to be a part of your life today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.